Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Today I'm your facilitator, Carolyn Peterson, and I'm the Assistant Program Manager for Library Development, and I have been working with First Tuesday's presentations for quite some time. And today, um, as you've seen technical support, we have two, um, two individuals on the call in case your um, something goes weird. And I've already noticed that we had some buffering issues. Uh, Jeremy's voice got very fast and then very slow. And that happens with our, our bandwidth buffering. And that there's nothing that we can have any issues with. So if you have, you will notice that their phone numbers are available right there. If you're, you know, if you're on a phone or if you have any issues, um, you know, please uh, don't hesitate to contact them. So um, they are there. And then we always like to acknowledge our, um, who funds our service. We are a part of the Wa Office of the Secretary of State here at the Washington State Library. And our funding comes from the Institute of Museum and Library Services as a result of the Library Services and Technology Act. So we always like to say we thank, we thank everyone and, and we appreciate the federal funding which allows us to bring these presentations to you. Um, we have, as part of our um, reporting for both the Office of Financial Management and for our LSD funders, we would ask that you would just briefly type in, um, you know, if it's just you, what library or organization you're with and what city and state. And then at the very end, we have a really quick, like, barely 30 second questionnaire. And before you log off and, and go away, if you would just fill that out, that really helps us um, continue to work on our, um, our outcomes to see if these are effective presentations for you. And we really appreciate your participation in that. So if everyone could go ahead and type. I can see several folks are typing um, as to where they are. We'd appreciate that. We see it coming in. So um, as we'll do that, so please, again, type uh, if, if it's just you, your library, or that you're associated with city and state, we appreciate that. Okay. Great. Well, we are looking forward to our p presentation from Ken Harvey. And Ken Harvey is the communications director of the Snow Owl Libraries here in Washington State. And he, has success he and his team have successfully presented two TEDx events now for the Snow Owl system. And I believe it was this last one, 800 people attended on the on-site presentation, and then another 1,400 co connected through the live stream. And um, I have asked Ken to share what it takes to do such a presentation. And the other thing, um, you know, while his system is a system that is fairly large with a fair amount of resources, he is also going to address how you could scale this down or scale this up either way. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Ken. And I will watch the chat box. And if you have a question that occurs to you, um, go ahead and type it in. And then I will gently interrupt Ken so that he can answer any of your questions. Thank you, so, Carolyn. Ken, the and um, hello, everyone. I really appreciate you joining us. And I'm delighted to be with you and share with you uh, Snow Owl Libraries and our experience and involvement with, um, with TEDx through the TEDx Snow Owl Libraries. Uh, effort that we've had. So in the course of this talk, I'm going to invite you to take notes and, and jot down some of your thoughts uh, around questions that I may pose. Even though I'm not going to be formally uh, asking you to respond uh, in this talk, because I want to make sure we covered all the material, I, I do believe that um, some of the, your, your notes and thoughts will be useful for the discussions that you likely will have with your, your supervisor, manager, director, uh, after uh, this session is done in terms of what you may choose to do or consider doing with, uh, with TEDx. So first off, I don't want to assume that everyone is familiar with, um, is actually familiar with the, um, with what TEDx is. And so, um, so I'm posing the question, what is TEDx? Well, TEDx is actually an independently organized TED event. And that leads automatically to the question, well, who is Ted? And Ted is not the name of a person. Uh, it's actually the name of a conference that um, it was an annual uh, conference that was started by a man named uh, Richard Worman, Richard Saul Worman down in California. And that, um, that conference uh, was was ultimately taken over uh, by a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization called the Sapling Foundation. 
So TED is a um, represents really kind of a nonprofit uh, approach towards uh, things that are near and dear to most of us in public libraries. The foundation is known um, and with TED for its mission of, of providing platforms for ideas that they believe are worth spreading. Now, TED is actually an acronym that stands for uh, Technology, Entertainment, and Design. And it was uh, the founders' uh, vision and sense that there was a convergence happening uh, between those three areas that led him to want to uh, share uh, ideas around what was happening, what he saw happening back in 1984. And so the first TED conference in 1984 actually uh, included a demo of um, the compact disc, which was new technology, um, the first ebook, uh, 3D graphics that were cutting edge from Lucasfilm, and also uh, the mathematics behind fractal geometry. Now, uh, TED uh, re reflects all topics that uh, range from science to business to philosophy, global issues, and um, and TED has now become a global community uh, that is um, translated or or originating ideas in over 100 languages around the globe. The the ideas behind TED are. Are, are sought out as inspired and presented in short, uh, in short talks. Those talks typically range in uh, duration from about three minutes to uh, 18 minutes in length. Uh, and rarely, uh, well, occasionally you'll see some that are more than 18 minutes. But the founder's um, sense was that he didn't want anyone on stage with notes presenting ideas, and he definitely did not want them to um, to go beyond 18 minutes. And in fact, in those early years, he would actually, as the host, storm on stage and stop a speaker who had exceeded that time limit. Now, that was because he just hated uh, long speeches, and uh, and so he imposed his will. Well, that format is stuck, and um, the uh, TED really looks at the power of ideas that are presented by passionate speakers. Well, in some ways, TED represents a global phenomenon. It's a, it's a popular annual conference. It, it normally sells out, and that's, that's amazing considering that uh, it's a high cost of entry to attend those conferences with, with costs that, that typically range from a couple of thousand dollars to maybe uh, five, six, or seven thousand uh, dollars to walk through the doors. But those conferences showcase deep thinkers and the the talks that they present are then packaged and um, and many of them then see light as they're uploaded to the TED YouTube channel and they're watched um, by viewers all around the world and in fact um, several years ago uh, the number of views on the of TED talks had surpassed one billion with a B uh, views which is pretty amazing. Now, TEDx um, represents uh, a, a, a phenomenon that TED officials uh, discovered because of the popularity of their conferences. They were receiving so many requests to consider holding events in um, in numerous uh, cities and uh, communities that that they couldn't accommodate, and they were asked to consider a lot of uh, local speakers that they also couldn't accommodate. And so they decided to begin allowing. Uh, locals to to actually organize their own uh, TED style events, and that's where TEDx came from. So, why would a library like Snow Isle, Snow Isle Libraries, or maybe your library, consider organizing a TED style event? Well, libraries actually follow some guiding principles, which, um, in many ways, are similar to um, those uh, that revolve around TED. We, we believe in the free expression of ideas, equal access to different points of view, and we're always looking for opportunities, um, providing opportunities to those we serve for lifelong learning. So with Snow Isle Libraries, we felt that there was a wonderful alignment between uh, our values and uh, Ted's values and, and looked at some of the desired outcomes that we had 
um, over the next, uh, over like a three to five year time period. And we wanted to leverage our resources with the global brand that Ted brought to, um, to capture the imagination uh, of uh, a range of, of adults in age groups that, 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 that range from millennials to senior citizens. Because what we had found with Ted was Ted seemed to have, have found a formula that enabled them to both intrigue, attract, and create uh, deep, meaningful experiences that seem to be inspirational and transformational. So, again, we wanted to leverage that visibility that came with aligning ourselves with the TED brand. We wanted to, um, to dramatically raise our visibility. We wanted to um, reach, better reach, customers and non-customers, and then leverage resources so that we could achieve some outcomes which really matter to us in terms of the communities and the region that we serve. And we wanted those outcomes with, the le with leaders in government sector, in the nonprofit sector, for the, in the business and for-profit sector, and the educational sectors within our region. And if I had to translate that, I would say that we were looking for ways to show how relevant we are and that we're more than a nice to have and that when, it, when, when and if opportunities came for, for those that we serve to make decisions in terms of library funding, we wanted them to see us as vital and not a nice to have. So let me take a minute to explain what a, what a TEDx um, uh, is uh, and what, what, it, what it requires. So uh, a TEDx event requires an individual to, to essentially organize an event or program around ideas and, uh, that are based upon a theme which are designed to spark some deep thinking, conversation, and lead to a more connected community. One of the nice things about uh, TEDx, which makes it, makes it uh, kind of an easy uh, connection with, uh, with libraries, is that uh, like our uh, library events, uh, they're not used for selling. It's not meant to, to be overtly self-promotional, and it's not used to raise funds. So it's not about goods uh, or products or pushing uh, commercial services. It's not really about brand names or even celebrity names. It's really about ideas that are worth spreading. So for small libraries, after taking a closer look at TED and TEDx, we decided that we wanted to leverage the types of experiences that individuals were having with TED and TEDx uh, events elsewhere so that our region would better understand how people are transformed, are transformed through their interactions with Snow Isle libraries. And so this was working as part of, a, of a, an overall uh, strategy. So we ended up holding a day-long event uh, on November 6, 2015. And you can see uh, that it attracted a crowd. A year later, um, we did it again. And so this was le less than two months ago on November 18th. So we, we held a, both events in a local performing arts center in Edmonds, Washington. We streamed the signal to, uh, to others who could not fit into this location, and, but who were watching as groups in many of our community libraries and also some other com uh, selected uh, community viewing sites. And again, well attended well received. So now to be clear, we were not the first and, and nor were we the only library to, to uh, connect with, uh, with TED and, and organize a TEDx event. Uh, you're seeing on, on screen um, a list of some of the other libraries uh, around North America that um, have been involved in this effort and um, that many of them predated our own uh, entry into this, into this area. And so these are some of the, uh, some of the pioneers, and we have been able to uh, take advantage of the things that they have learned and, uh, and, and benefit from it. So according to the information that I have 
from uh, from TED. There are perhaps three dozen or so libraries in North America, uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, who've organized uh, a, a library-related TEDx event. So let's let's look at at what um, what may be similarities between a library program and a TEDx event, and let's consider what actually makes a library program or event successful. Now, this is a question that, that you need to ask yourself as well. What would make, and what does make, a library program uh, successful for you now? And what would you be looking for in terms of a TEDx event if you were to, um, to uh, pursue one? Is it the attendance and uh, that's important to you? Is it providing interesting, uh, an interesting set of topics? Uh, perhaps it's meeting uh, the need of your audience and you know, what would be those needs that you would be looking to, uh, to meet? Is it achieving a level of support from attendees? Or is it moving them to uh, an action or a set of actions that you're hoping to, um, to see and measure? Is it uh, that you're focused on perhaps creating new connections with, uh, with attendees? Maybe you're looking for uh, additional engagement opportunities between customers, non-customers, and your library staff. Or maybe uh, you may be focused on simply getting uh, different age groups that you have had trouble attracting to, um, to previous library programs. Uh, and you want to really focus on those individuals. Well, the, what we are finding is that it appears that TEDx can be very helpful in achieving uh, many or maybe all of those things. So here are some of the strategic outcomes that you might be considering and some of the things that we were looking for as we considered uh, TEDx for ourselves. So our interest uh, sprung out of uh, uh, our looking at strategies with, which would help us capture the attention of millennials and regional leaders and non-customers and uh, even uh, individuals from the ranks of those that we consider super supporters, foundation donors, uh, friends of the library members, individuals that we wanted to make sure um, continue to see the library as presenting information that was of interest to them and, uh, and then becoming excited from the experience. So we were really looking at, at ways to gain the interest of adults, uh, especially adult non-customers, people who, who and individuals who use the library and pay for it, or excuse me, who don't use the library, but they pay for it. And what we're finding is that in terms of reaching uh, many of those individuals, it seems to have been working through TEDx. Now, if you're considering a TEDx, uh, but you're not sure if you've got the resources to actually pull one off, the good news is that it, it is very scalable. Very scalable. I've spoken to uh, some TEDx organizers who were the only person um, that um, that was available to actually work on an event and they made it happen and they felt it was successful. And in the cases there were individuals who had a team that could work with them or, and, and maybe teams of teams that could work with them. Well, it's, it is all scalable based upon the resources that are available to you. It can be as small or as simple, on the, which is the left uh, end of the spectrum, to as large and complex, the right end of the spectrum, as you have resources available to you. And, but the scope of it should be, a, should be factor, you should factor into that what is it you're hoping to achieve versus the resources that you have available. So another way of looking at this um, level of effort versus uh, opportunities is kind of represented in this pyramid. Now, Snow Owl Libraries made the decision to host a full day event. And so we, we essentially uh, decided to try and, uh, to achieve the top of the pyramid uh, through our, our first two efforts. 
that might not be the right uh, decision for your organization. It really depends upon what you're trying to achieve and the resources that you have available. So you have options around where you enter uh, into this, uh, this process. Now, the simplest, easiest way to be involved in TEDx is actually don't host your own, but, but be, uh, be involved in someone else's event. Find someone else who's organizing an event. Help them. Uh, you could be a financial partner. You could be an in-kind sponsor. You could um, let them know that you're available to be part of the experience around the events. So you could, you could uh, arrange to come in and set up an information booth or a library card registration station um, uh, around their, uh, their, the auditorium where the uh, speaking uh, or the room where the speaking occurs. Or you could bring your bookmobile to the event and have it set up outside. You could also offer to provide a speaker from your organization who could speak to some element uh, or some idea that's associated with the, with the theme of that event. However, however, if you choose to host an event, you'll need to apply for a license. And the license grants you the things you, can, you see here on, on the screen. The use of their name and, and logo, and which gives you an opportunity to kind of leverage um, their brand. Uh, they give you a specific event name, and you also get, uh, get a web page uh, as part of their website. Now, normally, the person who um, applies for the license will be identified as the organizer. However, you can have a team of organizers um, depending upon the scope of your event. With, this, uh, with our events, uh, we've chosen to have a team of organizers, one or more, or excuse me, two or more organizers working together to make it happen. The, the license uh, application will ask you to give, to request a name, and that name for your event will likely be associated with the location and the library's name at that location uh, for the event. So you'll you'll be you'll want to think about that, and you will also want to think about whether or not this is going to be a one-time event or something that you're going to attempt to pursue on a um, on a periodic basis. If you choose to pursue a library program type event, um, you'll want to think about the length of the event. Uh, you'll want to think about how often you would want to um, hold this. Would it be a, a weekly, a monthly, a quarterly, uh, maybe two times a year type of event? And what, and based upon the length, then what's the combination of, uh, of uh, video video TED Talk or TEDx Talk uh, versus live speaker that you're going to use. Because the whole idea, the whole thrust of these uh, events is really presenting ideas and then providing some opportunity for, um, for attendees to discuss what they've heard. Now, Juno uh, Library in Alaska has been using uh, the video TEDx Talks to, um, to create uh, viewing and discussion groups that come together monthly. And they actually uh, did that for a couple of years, 2013 and 2014. And you'll notice here that their friends group uh, actually covered the cost of, uh, of pizza for attendees. Klamath Library in Oregon has been using the viewing and discussion parties uh, with TED Talks uh, over the last three years. And their talks uh, typically are about an hour and a half in length. And uh, Brownell Library in Vermont has also been using uh, TEDx as a one and a half hour monthly program. And they um, began doing those in 2016, according to the information I had available. Westport Library in Connecticut um, has gone in for a little bit more intensive uh, effort with uh, three hour or four hour programs that include uh, multiple speakers. And you'll notice here that they actually had um, 
uh, an attendance, a registration fee of $15, which included uh, help them pick up the cost or cover the cost of refreshments. So, Snow Isle Libraries is a is a two county uh, library district which covers about two thousand a little a uh, little bit more than twenty two hundred square miles and we're located north of um, the Seattle Metroplex area in the two counties that are north of the county in which Seattle Washington is located so uh, our name re reflects Snohomish the name of the county, Snohomish and Island County, so Snow Isle Libraries. And as I had mentioned earlier, we chose to jump into the into the deep end of the pool or or the, the high end of the pyramid with a full day event of speakers at a performing arts center. So it was not within the library setting. It was, we we essentially kind of extended the library presence into uh, an offsite performing arts center, and we took a gymnasium that was within that complex and we transformed it into um, an idea innovation and engagement space, which we called an idea lab. And that was a space where we wanted to provide, uh, give uh, attendees, speakers, and local innovators an opportunity to, to connect and discuss um, ideas that they had heard during the sessions. And people would stream from the, um, from the, from the talks at, during the breaks out into the idea lab and, uh, and interact with one another. For our events, we had a full slate of speakers um, for both of our um, for both events. Um, on screen, you can see that we had 23 to 19, 23 speakers in 2015, 19 in 2016. And uh, the advice I would give any of you considering a, a full day event is that uh, that's a little uh, ambitious. Uh, having that many speakers, uh, probably nine to 17 speakers is is uh, is plenty. Now another type of event that we have tried uh, as part of this effort uh, in the, over the last two years is a TEDx salon. So the TEDx Noir Library Salon was was um, the result of one of our community colleges approaching us after our first large event, saying that they wanted to uh, host a follow-up in which uh, several of our TEDx speakers would be invited back to discuss their some of the ideas that they shared and uh, and answer questions from the audience, and so it was a hosted event um, with um, with three speakers, and this is a scene uh, from that event. Now, a salon is a is a specific type of event that uh, you can choose to to uh, apply for, um, which is a lot less uh, labor intensive and planning intensive than a full um, a full day or half day event, and uh, it's meant to be a sh much shorter program with a smaller audience. Really, around uh, discussions around an idea presented from the, from a TEDx talk uh, or a live speaker um, who who is uh, there at the salon. One of the wonderful things that you can leverage with TED and TEDx is that they their talk uh, their talk their talks are in this uh, video library that uh, is just astounding and there's a variety of topics a wide range of talks and they they have them uh, they have a search engine which allows you to search for them based upon uh, either the, the name of the speaker or a topic or uh, maybe a part of the world or the length of the talk and so. Those talks are can be found from that are from three to six minutes in length, seven to thirteen minutes, fourteen to eighteen minutes in length, or more. And there's a lot to choose from. So we're not going to go to the site um, as part of this presentation, but I I, I invite you to go uh, to uh, these two sites and look at what's available. It's really uh, amazing and gives you a great great selection. So in terms of the steps that we took to deliver our full full day event, um, we had to figure out what we where we wanted to land, what were the outcomes that we were looking for, and then we scoped it out to match that. We submitted a license application, we organized the work, 
uh, figuring out who's going to make decisions. We created a process uh, for the different types of things that, that needed to happen uh, as we were working towards the date, time, and place of the event. And we identified all of the different functions that would, that would need to um, be in play to uh, help us deliver a successful event. We have to decide up front, and this is something you really should think about. Do you want to cover the cost of the event yourself, whether it's a small program, such as Juno's, where they have uh, decided to uh, provide refreshments for a short program, and or do you, or a large program, um, an event such as uh, the Snowball Libraries or some of those other uh, libraries that were in the larger list that I showed earlier, who's going to cover those costs? And if you if you decide that um, that you have the funding to do that, great. If you decide that you really don't have the funding to um, to to advance towards this type of effort, uh, or you've got other very important things to use uh, the available funds for, you may discover that there are partners in the community and the region, uh, or perhaps even the library sector, who would be interested in uh, aligning with you and the TEDx brand. Um, and giving you assistance. Uh, you also have to figure out, uh, and find out, find and secure speakers, and and then make sure that you're just with your teams that you're taking, uh, paying attention to the details that will enable you to deliver to deliver a successful, effective event, and also create an experience which uh, meets the needs of the. Um, of all the who are involved, whether it's speakers, whether it's audience members, whether it's uh, partners, if you if you have any, and then you you if you decide that you want a larger scale event, and uh, one of the things that we did was we actually streamed, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, a live signal from the uh, main event location to uh, the first year ten community libraries, the second year thirteen community libraries and some additional uh, public viewing uh, sites through other organizations. So you'd have to decide if that's something that you want to, um, to attempt. We also, uh, after the event with live speakers, uh, the TED license requires you to take that talk and package it and then upload it to the TEDx YouTube channel, which is something um, that, that we did. And, and, uh, and then, what what we have done and what uh, what you I would really rec uh, recommend that you do is figure out what are the things that you want to count and measure uh, and why those things are important to you and then use them as part of an evaluation process so, so that you can decide whether or not this is something that you want to do again and renew a license or and what things can you do and improve to um, to learn from because continuous improvement is really part of what con uh, continues to make this an extraordinary experience, both for your organization and um, those um, speakers and um, the audience. So for us in 2015, um, we, um, this is, a, this is uh, images from the cover and the back of the program that we had. And this shows the, um, the speakers uh, lineup and and then the schedule for the day. And so a, a, a wonderful, wonderful op, uh, group of, of individuals. And, uh, and the day that they pro helped us provide was, was truly amazing. In terms of some of the metrics that we, were, we looked at, um, this is the, the attendance and that we found at the different locations. So essentially, kind of over a thousand attendees uh, the, through the you know with all of the various locations that we had, almost two thousand who chose to watch the live stream at work or at home or or other uh, areas. And and since the end of the event, the posted talks that we have put up to the YouTube channel and have linked to our website have amassed more views than anything else that we've ever posted, any other videos that we've ever posted online. Um, it's very important that when you upload those to the YouTube channel that you, you link them back to your website so that it helps bring uh, additional traffic to your website and opportunities for you to, to use that as a way of getting 
pushing attention to other things that uh, the main things that the library is there to provide. So our most recent effort um, is shown here. Uh, so last November, um, this was a lineup of speakers that we had, and uh, and the program that uh, an order of speakers, as well as additional kind of uh, video TED talks or or other video opportunities, uh, to represented more ideas than we had time on the uh, on the program. And in terms of some of the results we saw from from those. Uh, very similar. But one of the things that was very interesting um, for the second event was that because of the interest that, that arose uh, and the excitement that arose following the first event uh, within our region about a TEDx in our, in, our, um, in our counties, and because of the interest that occurred in the library community, after um, we were fortunate to receive the Top Innovator Award from, for library positioning from the Urban Library Council, we decided to promote this event beyond our library service area. And we encouraged our speakers to notify their peers across the nation or across the world about their TEDx talk uh, and that they could be watched live. And so the, the numbers you see on screen really kind of reflect uh, an effort that we uh, undertook to actually promote beyond our service area, uh, and and this was part of our own uh, library positioning and repositioning effort. Um, that was all um, uh, part of us preparing ourselves for future um, uh, library capital facility votes and library levy uh, efforts. So the feedback that we've received from attendees in both years has been tremendous. And, uh, and what's very not uh, notable is that it was important that attendees credited Snow Isle, Snow Isle libraries with enabling them to have this experience. So it wasn't enough to simply provide them a, a great program provide them a, uh, a day to remember it, uh, and ideas to continue thinking about, but making sure uh, to the best of our ability that they understood that it was a library that, that brought this to them. So I see a question actually that, that has come up that, um, that I'm just going to take a, a step back for a second and, and, and answer. Um, someone asked, I think Donna asked, you know, how were you able to exceed the 100 attendee limit? that TEDx mentions in the rules? And that's a great question. And that was something that, that, um, that we sought to, to figure out, how could we do that? And the way that we did that was we, we worked, uh, we talked with our Snow Isle Libraries Foundation and uh, about the 100 limit, 100 person limit. And we talked about desired outcomes that we really wanted to create an event that, that drew in more individuals than that. And the in the rules, it states, in the TED rules, it states that that limit can be exceeded if the organizer or, 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 or organizers attend a, um, a TED conference. And so what we did was we worked with our foundation to essentially um, provide us a scholarship so that um, two of us were able to attend uh, not the main conference, but a, a branch, an, off, an off-site branch, essentially an off-site viewing party to the main conference. And that enabled us to, um, to essentially kind of move to the next level of a TEDx event with, um, with no uh, cap on the number of um, attendees. So going back to um, the feedback that we, that we received, um, the, uh, the, the feedback that, we came, that came from speakers, from speaker coaches, from uh, uh, event partners, and uh, area leaders and public officials just continue to be uh, just very warm, very congratulatory, and had words like transformational and inspirational and uh, amazing uh, sprinkled through them. And that just has continued to um, convince us that we were meeting those desired outcomes in terms of 
of reaching the individuals that were important for us to reach as we began uh, positioning ourselves for, for future uh, library elections. Um, there is a question, if you would like to address it now, or do you so want to wait till the end? Yes. Um, someone asks, if you hold a salon with TEDx past talks, do, you need, do they need to get a license? Well, um, the TED officials would 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 prefer that any salon type event um, come um, with uh, with license approval. Now, the I think that technically speaking, um, any library uh, or any group could choose to have, or any organizer could choose to have a salon event. The only thing is, you you could not use you should not use TEDx in the title of the program because the TEDx uh, name is trademarked and that could that could result in um, uh, kind of an, infor an unfortunate uh, issue and, and relationship with, uh, with TED and, and TEDx. So they, um, so if you want to use TEDx in the name of your promotional materials or in the name of your event, then it really re requires a, um, a license approval. All right, so I wanted to uh, just very quickly um, just give you some early survey results from the most recent survey uh, or the most recent event that we've done. We're still awaiting um, the kind of the bulk of the of the survey and feedback and evaluation from TED because TED, after an event, contacts all the attendees and sends them a, um, a, um, a survey and, and, and then they, they provide that, uh, that feedback to us uh, after they've uh, tabulated it and evaluated it themselves. But this is, uh, these are some responses to some, to some questions that we sent out ourselves and so to this one, uh, you know, do you consider yourself a member? This essentially tells us that uh, most of our attendees were customers, but 15% were non-customers. So this was very important to us. How about the idea of um, of whether or not someone is motivated by the TEDx experience to actually pursue other things that small libraries offers? Well, this is very important to us. And so seeing this number as small as it is, uh, shows us that in, just in terms of an intention, um, it's an encouraging indicator that uh, individuals are motivated to look at what else we have. And so in some ways, we, this is a showing that we're using TEDx as a way to really invite and induce individuals to come through the doors uh, physically or come through the doors uh, virtually through uh, the online library. The third and final question that I'm going to share with you is the results uh, to, you know, kind of the recommendation. Would you recommend small libraries to others really based upon uh, this TEDx experience? And overwhelming, uh, very, I mean, it's very difficult to get uh, higher uh, percentages than this in terms of, uh, of yes. So this uh, we find to be very, very important to us as a very strong indicator. And um, we'll measure this again. Uh, in a few months to see if it's if it's a lasting impression. Now, in terms of just dollars and cents, very quickly, um, the first event that we had in 2015, uh, we actually uh, I worked with a uh, a local uh, someone in, in the in the greater region who has done a number of TEDx events and been involved with the TED organization uh, about what would make sense in terms of just budgeting for the type of event that we were looking for in 2015. He suggested sixty to $75,000. So we set a budget for $74,000. We made a decision that, that we were going to seek partners to help us um, defray those costs because we definitely wanted to uh, allow for free uh, attendance to the events. And even though the Performing Arts Center um, was charging us for the use of the facility, and uh, we received from the 19 community partners a significant amount of, of uh, financial and in-kind support, which, uh, which, uh, which really helped us uh, make this work. 
Uh, I have to mention that um, the Snow Isle Libraries Foundation was our principal and founding uh, partner in this effort. They provided us with funds for a scholarship. They provided, um, their, their, theirs was the first name on the partnership list that, uh, that we used to leverage getting other partners to come on board. And those partners uh, show up here uh, on, from the 2015 uh, program uh, and represent, as you can see, um, business, media, nonprofits, higher ed, and public transportation. Now, for this last um, TEDx event, um, we, we actually increased the scope of the event, and uh, so our budget went up to, to go with that, and we are still in the process of, of tracking all of the expenses and making sure that we've accounted for those. Um, so still to, uh, still to be determined, but we received a significant uh, growth in the amount of uh, financial support from partners, and what you see here is that the number of partners increased pretty dramatically as well, which for us represented a major advance in the community and strategic uh, regional partnerships that we were seeking in terms of uh, desired outcomes. I have to tell you that three out of four of these organizations previously had had no interest in connecting with us as a library uh, organization before TEDx New Ohio Libraries. And so it's very important for us that we, that this, uh, that this opportunity for partnership through, through the TEDx New Ohio Libraries effort, uh, we believe helps position us with the types of uh, advocacy work and, and grassroots support um, that, that uh, libraries, and we as a library organization, and we think other libraries uh, need as they kind of look at how they best can provide and meet the needs of their region going forward. So after two major TEDx events with 42 speakers in all, thousands of attendees, over 100,000 views of the event talks online, we believe TEDx has made, it, has made sense for us. And, and it's helping us achieve some strategic desired outcomes. It's made us more visible and captured the imagination of news media and customers, non-customers and area leaders in ways that um, have been difficult for us to achieve in the past. It's increased a non-customer and customer sentiment that, that Snowall Libraries is an important and vital part uh, of, the, of the community and, and that we're crucial within the region. Visionary, we're a major component of, uh, of what uh, is important in, uh, in this region's uh, future. And uh, TEDx Noir Libraries is really positioning us for the, the kind of the funding measures that we know we will be going to the public with uh, over the next few years. So we are we're looking at uh, future library capital facility projects and votes on those. We're looking at a library levy lid lift uh, election and um, in a few years. And so we believe that if voters approve these ballot measures, um, those, those will be in some part due to their remembering that we delivered very, very positive, inspirational, interesting uh, programs and events, such as TEDx Noir Libraries, not solely because of, but, but such as, in addition to the other uh, types of programs that we, and services that we offer. And that the, the approval that we get from voters uh, will, will enable us to deliver on our strategic plan and priorities to deliver world-class library services and, um, and meet the needs of communities and individuals and the region. So if you're considering uh, TEDx for yourself, remember that there, there are many opportunities. You can leverage the TED brand and their resources. You can enter uh, into the effort in a scale that makes sense for you. And, um, and you can achieve many of your desired outcomes. So, um, so what I would say is, in closing, TEDx is a wonderful opportunity. And it's just waiting for you in your community, in your region, and your customers and your non-customers will thank you for it. Well, thanks, Ken. Um, wow, this is exciting. And we have another question. And it's, it, I love the fact that it, it sounds like that there are TEDx 
levels that are available for most libraries. So Kelsey had a specific question. She said, how much time did you allow yourself to plan? And that was question one. And then number two, did you take applications for speakers or did you approach people? So great questions. We, um, we began planning for the November 2015 uh, TEDx uh, event. Uh, essentially a year in advance. So we, the, in the fourth quarter of 2014, we, because we were looking at a, essentially kind of a full-scale event, we gave ourselves uh, about 13, uh, 12 to 13 months to begin talking about it internally, you know, gain approval for the concept, uh, do the research of what would it take to gain an application, make the application, and then move into really laying out the, uh, out the work plan and following the work plan. We did do a, a, a curation. We, oh, we invited applications. We went public uh, after we had received the, the license. I think we notified the public. Um, well, we did the application, I believe, in uh, December of 2014. We received the um, uh, the license approval, uh, I think it was in February or early March of 2015. We began taking, uh, we notified the media and the public that we were taking applications and nominations for um, ideas and speaker uh, speakers uh, in April of uh, 2015, and um, and then began working with, the, and then we. We went through with our librarians a curation process of evaluating the um, the, the applications and submissions, and uh, selected speakers. Uh, most of our speakers by May June, and um, and then went through a process of meeting with each uh, potential speaker, determining whether or not, after an initial one or two initial meetings or conversations, that they that they were committed to a process and that their idea was interesting enough and they were passionate enough to, to really uh, do a, a, a nice job on stage and then worked with them for uh, three or four months to prepare them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from folks? Uh, I've had a number of individuals request a copy of your slides. Do you mind if I send those out to them? To I am. Uh, that would absolutely, absolutely be great. All right, if anybody else would like a copy, please put your email in the chat, and I'll make sure to include you here. OK, any other questions? I see folks are typing. People are saying thank you, which I will echo as well. It's very nice. And before, um, could you, Jeremy, quickly put up the um, evaluation? Or are we doing a web tour here? Oh, please, if you could do this before you leave. <laughs> Another question is from Kelsey. She says, how did you decide what time of the year to do your event? Well, we, that's a good question as well. And we, for one of the things that I noticed, well, for us, we essentially we wanted to give ourselves enough time to do it well, rather than rushing through and creating, uh, rushing to it and um, creating additional stress for ourselves. We wanted to, to to be you know, very methodical and very pragmatic. How much time will it take to, to achieve what we're hoping for in terms of a, of, of a final experience for, for all involved? For us, that was uh, a year. Um, with other um, uh, library events that I've seen uh, in the TEDx, um, in the TEDx uh, listing uh, of programs, um, it looked like um, with them, you know, with some of them, it was a monthly program, and so they essentially looked at uh, probably staff resources like we did, and also uh, looked at when did they when did they think uh, audiences or attendees would be able to attend uh, based upon who they wanted to see come to that to that program or event. And for us, uh, we we looked at uh, the time of year, uh, wanting to make sure that it didn't. Uh, conflict with something else, some other major event that was happening that might draw individual, individuals away or create a, a major conflict in terms of scheduling. And we also looked at, um, at when, um, what was happening with, say, the uh, higher ed 
uh, what was happening with um, with the, that, those, those kinds of timings. So November seems to be the best time for us, and likely if we uh, as we look at doing another one for next year, we will likely stay to the November timeline. But that's what works for us. Okay. Um, there's another question about how often, how long the TEDx licenses um, last. Are they only for an annual event, or is it an ongoing thing? In other words, could you do? Did you have to reapply for the salon, for example? Um, it. So the the TEDx license typically um, is a twelve a twelve to fourteen month license. Um, I think it uh, technically uh, they they say it's an annual twelve month license. Practically speaking, um, they shared with me that um, it may give you essentially about fourteen months of coverage because they do anticipate that you know once you've had a great experience, you would likely apply. Again, and just in case you had had, um, had decided to schedule uh, an event just outside that 12-month window, there would be they wanted to uh, enable you to, to do that. With with that license, it allows you to have actually multiple events uh, of various types um, within that time frame, and so. Uh, but what will be important is when you are doing your application, you will want to uh, describe really uh, what you have in mind. And so if you're thinking that you would like to do uh, monthly or quarterly or, or uh, two times a year a salon or perhaps um, a salon and a library-based pro program um, and maybe a, a larger program, then you would just put all of that into the uh, the application process to give them an idea of what you have in mind. And then if you have questions, or they have questions, there's opportunity to have conversation with them so that everyone understands. And you'll find that they're very interested in helping you um, have the right type of license uh, that gives you the opportunity to, to create an, an unforgettable event or set of events. Okay. Um, other questions? And if, um, I don't see anyone. I see Paula is the typing box is open as is Donna. So we'll see. Um, but this, I, I'm amazed at how scalable. I had no idea there were that many TEDx possibilities. So that's really interesting to have learned that. So Donna has a practical question. She said, um, how much time did you allow between each speaker? Well, um, in the last two years, and for our last two events, we essentially um, programmed in approximately one minute between each speaker uh, as a maximum and about 20 to 30 seconds as a target. Whoa. And that was because we, we in some ways, um, we filled our pockets too full with uh, with great speakers, and and so uh, our pockets were truly bulging out with a lot of great content, and uh, and we found it difficult uh, to fit it all into uh, the time frame of a nine to five or nine to five thirty or a nine to four thirty period. If you if you reduce the, the number of, of speakers, you actually give your you give more time um, between speakers that you can choose to use in in various ways. But but um, the one thing that uh, I will say for our event was that by giving ourselves a really a kind of a target of about 30 seconds per speaker between each speaker, it really kept things moving along and uh, and it felt uh, it kept the energy level uh, high. Uh, with the audience and with the speakers, and so that worked well. But it, it's not the only it's not the only approach. And certainly, if you're looking at something more along of a of a library program, it's a kind of a viewing party and discussion, or a salon, uh, you don't have to worry about those types of uh, things really kind of pushing you uh, to to move forward quickly, because you want to encourage as much discussion and questions and answers as possible. 
Okay. Um, any other questions? Well, I see that um, Laura is typing and Karen is typing. Let's see if sometimes it takes a while for things to come through. But again, if those of you, it is that um, magical time if you have to get to the desk, please, again, uh, follow up with our, our quick survey here. It doesn't take very long at all. And we very much appreciate it. And again, Ken, thank you. Um, it sounds like you have really discovered something that is very effective for your community and that they very much appreciate. So that's great. Um, OK, well, Jeremy will uh, follow up for um, sending out the slides. And he will take care of that. And if you wish to refer this to colleagues, we do. Um, Jeremy will have the archive posted to our website, uh, which is where you will be able to see the presentation again um, at a different time uh, by about noon today. Usually, Jeremy gets it up pretty much by noon. And Jeremy is saying any, anybody who, hasn't, who wants the slides and hasn't, uh, the website address is if you go up a little further, if you scroll up the chat, it is there. Um, it is on our Washington State, um, the, a link to the uh, our website is there. So if you can uh, just scroll through it, you will find it at the Washington State Library, Service at the Library. So again, thank you. And uh, thank everyone for coming. Uh, we appreciate it. We learned from your questions. Thank you, Armand. Thank you for and, having uh, Again, Ken, thank you yeah, very thank much. Thank you, Ken. It was wonderful. Have a great day, everyone. You as well. OK. Thank you.